folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast and welcome to Dallas. I am back in the Big D filming some very important programs for TBN that I'll be telling you a lot more about in the days to come. You'll want to hear about this, so stay tuned. In the meantime, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. This was one of my mom's favorite days. She would be very upset that I forgot to wear green today, but happy St. Patty's Day nonetheless. And one of my favorite times of the year, March Madness. Unfortunately, that madness also seems to extend to Washington, D.C. right now. We'll dig into how the Biden administration is reportedly considering removing Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps from the terrorist blacklist. More on that in a minute. But up first, is Russia about to use the Iran nuclear deal to evade these international sanctions that have been levied against it because of its invasion? Not only that, is Russia now about to help Iran build nuclear plants? That's right, a Russia-Iran nuclear collab unfolding before our eyes. The Washington Free Beacon and a great journalist named Adam Credo reported this week that Russia is going to use that Iran deal, which folks, it has been stalled over the past few weeks, but it is about to be revived. Russia will use it to pretty much gain a financial windfall. Now, part of this strategy by Vladimir Putin's regime is a few things. Number one, to help Iran build at least two nuclear plants, and number two, help Iran complete its Bushir nuclear plant. Now, you've probably heard about Bushir over the years. It is a main cog in Iran's nuclear weapons program. And here's the hook. If Russia helps Iran to complete the Bushir project, a Russian company, the top Russian energy company, it's called Rosatom, will make $10 billion off of the deal which means instant sanctions relief to the tune of $10 billion. Why this is important and how the March Madness in D.C. fits in is that Russia says, Russian officials say, Sergei Lavrov, the Russian foreign minister, said just this week in Moscow that Russia has guarantees from the United States that any business between Russia and Iran will not be affected by those sanctions that have been levied against Russia or by the Iran nuclear deal. Russia wants to guarantee that it can still do business with its good friend and ally, the Iranian regime. And apparently, that's exactly what the Biden administration has agreed to. Again, $10 billion tied up in this Russian deal to help finish uh, two components of that Bushir nuclear plant. And again, addi an additional two nuclear plants. Now, we're so concerned right now, and rightfully so, about the possibility of some kind of nuclear conflict with Russia, yet the U.S. is looking the other way as Russia helps Iran to become a nuclear power, essentially. It doesn't seem to make much sense, but that's exactly what we have unfolding right now. And the desperation in D.C. for an Iran nuclear deal to come to fruition is leading to some very bad decisions, folks. Very unwise to allow this to proceed, but that is what is going to need to happen if that Iran deal gets back off the ground. Russia wants these guarantees, and apparently they have them. The U.S. will not stand in the way of the Russia-Iran relationship. Now, I believe that there are prophetic implications to that Russia-Iran relationship. I'm talking in particular about the war of Gog and Magog as laid out in the book of Ezekiel, chapters 38 and 39, tomorrow here on the newscast, Friday, March 18th, you will not want to miss a deep dive into that Gog-Magog war with our good friend, New York Times bestselling author, Joel Rosenberg and Chris Mitchell of CBN News. I interviewed them both in Jerusalem recently, and we talked about Ezekiel 38, 39, the Ezekiel effect, and folks, more and more, we see it coming together right now, in particular with that Russia-Iran relationship and Vladimir Putin's clear expansionist aims. Now, a quick quote, I'll just read it straight off my phone to give you an idea of how these Russia, Russia brokered essentially, Iran nuclear talks in Vienna have gone. Here's a quote from Russia's top nuclear negotiator, Mikhail Ulyanov, who is in Vienna. And again, he has been serving as the mediator between Iran and the other parties there at the negotiating table in Vienna. That includes 
China, Britain, France, Germany, and the United States, but they're not in the room at the big boys' table. They're at the kids' table outside the room. That was Iran's demand, that U.S. officials cannot be in the same room as this deal has been negotiated. So what U.S. officials have done is to farm out the negotiation to Russia. How nice. And here's a direct quote from Mikhail Ulyanov, again, Russia's top negotiator in Vienna. And I quote, I am absolutely sincere in this regard. Iran got much more than it could expect. Much more. Realistically speaking, Iran got more than, frankly, I even expected. Others expected. This is a matter of fact. So Iran, according to the main negotiator in this whole deal from Russia, is the big winner in the Iran nuclear deal. Surprise, surprise, folks. Are you surprised? We've been outlining this on the newscast for weeks now. This is a unilateral capitulation by the West, in particular by the Biden administration, where Iran's ballistic missile program, not on the table. Iran's sponsorship of terror throughout the region, not on the table. But what is on the table is billions of dollars in sanctions relief going into the pockets of the Iranian regime courtesy of the United States and Western powers. And by the way, before we go, last component of that, I mentioned it a minute ago, the Biden White House is also now reportedly considering, according to Axios, removing Iran's Revolutionary Guards Corps from the terror blacklist. Why is this such a big deal? Well, the IRGC, for short, is essentially the vanguard of the Iranian regime. Think back to the Nazi regime during World War II, Hitler's Gestapo. I would compare the IRGC to a modern-day Gestapo, but even more influential, not only with a hand in the economic, the cultural initiatives of the Iranian regime, but the military and nuclear and ballistic missile programs, all under the thumb of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards Corps, not to mention the terror apparatus throughout the region, Hezbollah, Hamas, the Houthis, etc. And the IRGC answers directly to the Supreme Leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, no one else. Now, why will they be removed from the terror blacklist? Of course, it is part of making the Iran deal once again a reality. But number two, the Biden administration says, we will remove the IRGC as long as they give us guarantees that they won't act up anymore. That's all Iran has to give. I mentioned the word unilateral earlier. We're giving and giving here in the West, and Iran is getting, but the regime is not giving anything in return. And I posed the question yesterday. I'll pose it again today. You can please leave a comment. What exactly is the United States and the West as a whole getting out of the Iran nuclear deal? We know what Iran's getting. I just laid it out for you. By the way, another part of that deal is Iran uh, giving their enriched uranium stockpiles to Russia for safekeeping. This is serious. This is really on the table. So we know what Iran's getting. What exactly is the West getting? Please comment, enlighten me. I I'd love to know because right now this looks like the bad deal to end all bad deals. But guess what? God Almighty still sits on the throne and he is in control. I'm not going to fret. I'm not going to worry about these very poor and unwise decisions that are being made because I know God is on the throne. So take heart. Keep these matters in prayer. Remember tomorrow, Gog, Magog, breakdown right here on the newscast. Until then, thanks so much for joining us. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.